Good morning, y'all. Well, it is day 74, and I am leaving Loft Mountain Campground Store. And, um, yeah, I might as well just go ahead and admit it. I slept in the laundry room. <laughs> it was uh, very warm in there, and they had heaters, and... It got colder and colder last night. I was kind of waiting for people to clear out. The store closes at like 5 o'clock, but people from the campground can come down and obviously use the laundry and their showers and bathroom and everything else. But the park service is kind of funny. They don't like you camping, but only in their designated campgrounds or in the back country and I had done 21 miles yesterday after the store I didn't feel like going any further but you're not supposed to camp around the stores or even a quarter of a mile from the Blue Ridge Parkway <laughs> but uh yeah it got pretty warm in there as I was sitting around just waiting to see what was going to happen and i decided to throw down my uh, air mattress and my sleeping bag and i just slept right there and i was warm so yeah hopefully the park service doesn't come after me and we're up and running this morning i am headed to swift run gap which is where highway us 33 cuts through the park from east to west. That same road goes all the way to Richmond, becomes Staples Mill Road, not too far from where I used to live. And I have a friend from Richmond who's gonna pick me up there and take me down. I'm gonna stay at a little hostel barn. I think the barn has been converted into a hostel or something. And he and I are gonna go eat dinner. <clears throat> so that'd be kind of fun. And then he'll take me back to the hostel and that'll be my day. But not too far today. I wanted to do big miles yesterday and only have 17 miles today to get to my pickup, meeting him around 3.30 or 4. So, yeah, shaping up to be another pretty day. A little chilly, not as bad as yesterday. And big blue skies again already. And it is 6.45 in the morning. So let's get going.
Amid the celebrations of creating a new national park like the Shenandoah, constructing this beautiful scenic parkway and restoring a deforested area and employing people after the Great Depression, it's easy to ignore a very complex and troubling aspect of those who called this area home, and they were displaced. There are people today who can relate the stories that their parents told them. Some had family roots here for more than 250 years. There were 465 families, more than 2,000 men, women, and children, unaware that there was a plan underway to remove them for some recreational national park project. More than half of these people earned less than $100 a year from intermittent labor and the sale of produce. And then one day, a group of people knock on their door, called commissioners and government officials and social workers, introduced themselves and started talking about evictions. Those that were literate appealed their case. Others who didn't understand the litigation never raised a voice. More than half did not own the land that they farmed, were forced off of it, and did not qualify for any compensation. Now, public sentiment sided with the Mountaineers, but condemnations and evictions continued and were ultimately upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. One-third left willingly. Some had to be removed by the sheriff. Efforts were made to resettle some families according to their abilities and aspirations, and more than 170 families were placed in homesteader project housing, but that required a mortgage and monthly bills, which was very foreign to these people. 20 years later, not a single original mountain family still occupied a resettlement house. And to discourage them from returning to their homes here in the mountains, officials destroyed every vacated home and outbuildings by burning or bulldozing them. Today, there is only one structure that was preserved. It's the Corbin Cabin near Luray, Virginia in Nicholson Hollow. But the wounds are still felt even to this day. Hey, y'all. Uh, so, day 74 has uh, come to an end. And uh, what a day it has been. You know, left uh, Loft Mountain Campground Store this morning and uh, had two or three fairly big uphills, uh, but made pretty good time. Uh, the terrain wasn't that bad. And I actually ran into a hiker that I hadn't seen since uh, back in Tennessee at Boots Off Hostel. Uh, back in Hampton, Tennessee, I guess that was. Uh, her name is Trouble. And yeah, she's really cranking out miles now. She's doing like 25 miles a day or something. I mean, she's, wow. But she had gotten off trail a few days, so I, um, I guess I caught up with her as well. But I made it here to Small Axe Farm. Uh, so I did about 17 miles a day. And as I mentioned, I, I used to live in Richmond. And I used to section hike a lot over here with uh, a good friend. Uh, and uh, he came over uh, and hadn't seen him in like 20 years. Picked me up, was gracious enough to drive me down into the, uh, down here to the hostel where it kind of checked in. And then we went down to small town here, Elkton, Virginia. And um, yeah, he bought me dinner, a big uh, pizza and chicken wings and lots of sweet tea and just uh, had great conversation caught up with his family mine and um we used to work together and he's actually still working going strong at 70 so uh, god bless him he's, he's tough uh but uh yeah this is a real working farm i met a nice family and they've got uh pigs as uh, you can see over here behind me as well as uh cattle and sheep and sheep dogs and uh, ducks and chickens and the whole bit but lovely people and they converted this barn back behind me into kind of a rustic hostel uh, they got a little sitting area that i videoed and a little area where we can basically just sleep in our sleeping bags there's no bunks or anything like that but you know there's a bathroom I had a, again another outdoor shower so i got to do that uh, but it's um you know it's good um, she's, uh, the lady here is actually doing my laundry as well. So I got my new green shirt on that my wife brought me this past weekend. So now I have two short sleeve shirts, uh, because it is summer and 
boy, I, I sweat through those those shirts pretty quickly. So that was nice. I got a got a new set of clothes and got rid of all that cold weather gear. And that's about it. Beautiful day, boy. It was really pretty. Couldn't ask for a better day today. And uh, gonna go at it again tomorrow and. Probably looking to try to do another 20 miler tomorrow. Just kind of keep pushing forward uh, to get to Front Royal, Virginia. That'll be my next big stop. And then the big one after that'll be Harper's Ferry, which is kind of theoretically the halfway point on the AT. Not exactly in mileage, but it's where the Appalachian Trail Conservancy headquarters are or is. And a lot of people stop and check in there and get their photos and all that stuff. So it's kind of again in theory the halfway point but uh yeah feel good and um appreciate everybody watching and uh, we'll uh see how it goes tonight at the farm <laughs> and a uh, big breakfast in the morning and then be back on trail so thanks again for watching night y'all bye-bye